People are often taught that the speed of light is the fastest possible allowed speed in our universe, and also that only light itself is capable of travelling at this constant speed, with everything else confined with moving below this cosmic speed limit. This constant is used in almost every model of the universe, with the speed of light being exactly 299,792,458 meters per second, and being denoted by the lowercase letter c. Intuitively, this makes sense for light to be the quickest thing in the universe. I mean, for starters, it has no mass. Anyone who has tried moving a heavy object knows it's harder to accelerate than a lighter one. So something with exactly zero mass should theoretically be the quickest, right? Well, in this video, I'm going to delve into multiple phenomena which seem to imply things travelling faster than light to then discuss the physics behind them and discover an important detail about the universe we live in. Okay, I want to start off with quite a trivial and easy to comprehend example. I want you to imagine you own a super powerful torch, one which emits a beam so strong that you can even use it to shine light on the moon at night. Now, whilst you're shining your mighty flashlight on the moon, I want you to put your hand in front of the bulb. This will project a shadow onto the moon, right? An imprint of your hand. If you were to then move your hand quickly in front of the torch with perhaps a flick of your wrist, say, you can visualise that the shadow on the moon will move incredibly quickly, and you may think that moving it quick enough could cause the shadow to cover a large distance in a far shorter time than light could. You have to remember that the moon is massive in reality, so passing a shadow across its entire surface in less than a millisecond could be surpassing light speed. In reality, no. A shadow is the lack of light, and so can only move by how quickly the photons of light are being blocked out. The final photons hitting the moon travel at light speed and define the start of a shadow, so shadows must be limited to moving at light speed. I guess you could say the maximum speed of dark is the speed of light. Ok, so that was quite an elementary case. Now let's think of something far more rigorous and physical than a shadow, like say, the expansion of the entire universe. It's been known for around a century that the universe is expanding. Moreover, it's been known for numerous decades that the rate of expansion is accelerating. This expansion is happening everywhere in space such that objects which aren't gravitationally bound in a local group or cluster are receding from each other. Put simply, this means that almost all galaxies in the night sky are moving away from us and are doing so at an accelerating rate. This universal expansion is driven by dark energy if you are interested, but for this video the key point to note is that this expansion is accelerating. If we assume the geometry of the universe is open or flat, which is entirely likely, the acceleration of space itself will keep on accelerating. Further away galaxies recede from us quicker. This is known as Hubble's law, and will mean that eventually the most distant galaxies will seemingly move away from us at faster and faster speeds, eventually being out of view forever, as they recede faster than the light from those galaxies can reach us. Once the expansion surpasses light speed, we will no longer be able to see distant galaxies, and the night sky will go dark in their places. So there you have it, really distant galaxies will eventually move away from us faster than light, so they travel faster than light, right? Well, no, not exactly. There's a technicality which needs to be considered in cosmology. The expansion of the universe happens in voids or empty space. A property of voids is that they seem to create more empty space over time which is what is experienced as an expanding universe. From the point of view of a distant galaxy, we would be receding from them faster than light, but in reality neither of us are surpassing light speed. What's really happening is that empty space is expanding faster than light, and what's empty space made out of? That's right, nothing. So nothing is travelling faster than light. This is an important point worth remembering which I'm going to reference again in a little while. Nothing is surpassing light speed, the vacuum of space is what would be expanding at light speed. A quick point on the expansion of the universe, only empty space is expanding, the distance between stars and galaxies is not, neither is the distance between the sun and earth or anything in the solar system. The space between you and the device you're using to watch this video on is not expanding either, it is only empty voids that do this. I hope you're still watching and aren't completely bamboozled just yet, there's still much more I want to cover. We've only scratched the surface of these thought experiments. Now I want to go from thinking about the entire universe and large scale structure to thinking about quantum mechanics and some of the smallest things in nature, that being particles. Quantum entanglement is the case when two particles are produced as a pair with linked properties. I'll use the simple case of two particles with spin produced from a particle with no spin. For this video, spin can be thought of as an intrinsic property of particles and can be either spin up or spin down. In order to conserve momentum, when these two particles are produced, one must be spin up and the other must be spin down. Therefore, these are a pair of entangled particles. By that I mean, once you know the spin of one, you'll immediately know the spin of the other, as it must be opposite. So far so good. Now let's talk about the quantum mechanical nature of particles. When particles are created with different possible values for their characteristics, they're in what's known as a superposition of states before measurement. This means that when our particles are first created, both of them are in a superposition, or a mixture, of being spin up and spin down. 
and it's only through acts of measuring the spin will the particle decide whether it's spin up or spin down. This is a well-known result in quantum mechanics, known as the wave function of a particle collapsing, and has the added effect here of once one particle chooses whether it's spin up or down, the other must immediately also decide and be the opposite. Before we measure spin, both are in undetermined spin, and you can do experiments to prove this. The act of measuring the spin forces the particle to choose either up or down, and its partner will then choose the opposite spin. I hope that all makes sense because now I want you to imagine creating these two particles, and before measuring the spin of them, moving them a far distance apart. At this point, we haven't measured their spin, and so both are in a superposition of spin up and spin down, or an undetermined state. Then imagine you measure the spin of one of these particles. This causes the other particle to immediately collapse in wave function and choose the opposite spin. Now look at the system as a whole. The second particle, whose wave function collapsed, somehow knew that you measured its partner's spin, and it immediately chose the opposite. This interaction happened faster than light, because remember, these two particles were separated a far distance before measurement was made. So measuring the spin of the first particle seemingly sent an instantaneous signal to the other to choose the opposite spin, with the signal travelling faster than light since it's instantaneous. You see where I'm going with this. So does this experiment violate the idea that light speed is the fastest allowed speed in the universe? The answer is once again no, but there's a particular caveat, and that is because of information. When the other particle collapses wave function and chooses the opposite spin, no information is transmitted and that's the key. You gain no new information from the second wave function collapsing as you can already work everything out from knowing the first particle's spin about the other particles. Likewise, you cannot assign a value to a particle like by saying to a friend that if their particle collapses into spin down it means a certain thing, as you cannot choose which spin which particle will have, you just know they'll be opposite, so once again no information is transmitted. Remember earlier when we saw that empty space was travelling faster than light speed, and now we have something that transmits no information doing so too. Now we can start to infer a property of light speed, namely, only things which transmit information are limited by light speed. This includes matter and light itself, e.g. through optical fibres. Anything physical and not empty space or things which are already known, like a corresponding wave function collapse. Let's consider another system and see how this hypothesis holds. Waves travel at different speeds. For example, sound waves are typically faster than water waves, and electromagnetic waves are much faster still. But really, when you say speed of a wave, you're talking about the group velocity of that wave. With the group velocity being how fast a wave packet in a certain medium moves through it, i.e. the wave speed. But there's another velocity in waves one can consider, that being the phase velocity. This is quite a difficult concept to explain, but it's essentially how the actual phase of a wave travels and can be quite hard to grasp, so I'll show an animation on screen of group velocity and phase velocity of a sinusoidal wave. But really, the group velocity is actually how fast the particles in the wave move, whereas the phase velocity is how the oscillatory parts of the wave move with respect to each other throughout the wave. And it's well documented that phase velocities of electromagnetic radiation can exceed the speed of light. Yet another case of a physical phenomenon breaking the universal speed limit. When will the madness stop? I'm not going to delve into any more details about proving how phase velocities can surpass light speed as it's quite tedious and algebra heavy. But let's examine this system using our newfound knowledge that only information transfer must be limited to light speed. The phase velocity only tells you how fast any one frequency component of a wave travels and this holds no real information at all. As in, this physically cannot transmit information. For that you're limited to the group velocity, which is limited by c, the speed of light. Once again, something can have a speed exceeding that of light, but only because no information is transferred. That's the key message of this video. Superluminal information, or by extent energy transfer, is not possible. Yet, there are definitely physical phenomena that can and do travel faster than light, many more than what I've covered in this video. Interestingly, if you were to try to accelerate an object to light speed, you would need an infinite amount of energy. This is due to special relativity and Lorentz transformations, something definitely worth looking into if you're interested. If you've made it all the way to this point in the video, you're a legend. And if you've enjoyed the video, or feel as if you've learnt something, please consider subscribing. Only a small amount of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. It's free, it helps out my channel a bunch, and you can always change your mind. But as always, thank you for watching.